one must understand the human body to understand mucus and the role of mucus in the health of the human body. And when we have all these congestive problems, uh, how we remedy that. Typically, medical doctors have worked on the old Jenner Pasteur theory of the germ. Uh, wasn't it Pasteur, I think, that killed two of his children uh, trying to prove that the germ had some validity and, and pathology? In reality, man freaks out with uh, pathogens, uh, which is microbial and, and the like, for no reason. Um, it reminds me of that uh, uh, Ripley's Believe It or Not segment where this young man had a lymphoma. And he finally found an Eskimo elder in northern Alaska to help him with the lymphoma. And the little old Eskimo elder told him to eat rotten food. And so he started eating rotten food. Of course, he threw up, he said, for about three weeks or so. But after he got used to it, uh, he, he felt it was pretty good. So he started eating all this rotten seal meat and rotten food. And three months later, no lymphoma left. And the reason for this, of course, is that all septic systems are full of bacteria. And the biggest, the serious problem medical doctors have had is the lack of understanding of the role of nature and why God created bacterium and their effect upon tissue. Uh, and they're not after your cells. They're after the congestion. They're after the toxemia. They're after the cellular wastes. The acids that cells eliminate must be acted upon. So all your lymph nodes are full of bacteria, just like your septic tanks at your house are full of bacteria. You would never kill the bacteria in your septic tank at your house because it wouldn't be long. You'd be flushing your toilet and waste would be backing up in your house because nobody would be breaking down the waste in your toilet, in your septic tank. And that the, God made these guys as janitors. What we have to understand is that we create a culturing medium for this by not moving our lymph systems properly. You back up sewage, you're going to see more activity in that. And sewage in the body is the cell waste. Cell waste are acids. And because these acids can damage the cells, this lymphatic fluid, this sewer fluid in the body is a mucus fluid. It is a lipid or cholesterol-based fluid that, that flows around the cell. 75% of the fluids that flow around the cell are the lymphatic fluids. Only 25% is blood. If you pop a big pimple, you will see 75% lymph and 25% blood. And the reason is that because acids are corrosive in chemistry, aggressive. It, uh, women use acetates or acetones to strip the fingernail polish off. So this mucosa that you have lining your mouth, lining your sinuses, lining the bronchi, lining your gut, your lungs. That is your main immune system. The mucus is how the body protects itself against acids or proteins or foreign chemistry. Even hot habaneros or, or uh, uh, peppers, you can feel a lot of mucus from it because it's abrasive to the mucosa. Anything that's abrasive or that can harm the body, the body produces mucus to protect it. Well, this mucus fills up the sinuses and the, and the voice box and the lungs and the bronchioles, and then we start talking like this. And it's just, we have to get this mucus out, because if you keep the mucus in, then you lose the ability to smell. You lose the ability to taste, to hear. You wonder where you parked the car. You can't breathe properly. You start having cancers of these areas. Right now, esophageal, palate, uh, eye, eye socket, brain cancers are all over the place. We get a ton of them in here. And it's just this mucus. Well, medical, the medical community has always suppressed the body's ability to eliminate mucus. Mucinex is one of the first true expectorants I've seen on the market in a long time. And now you're getting into herbal thinking, expectorants, cleansers, things that eliminate this mucus and clean it out of you. If you don't clean mucus out of you, it's your next mass, your next tumor. All a tumor is is a pocket of fluid. Tumor's not cancerous. Only a cell is cancerous. Cancer isn't a disease. It's a damaged cell. Well, what side? There's only two sides of chemistry. What side of chemistry do you think damages a cell? It's not base chemistry. It's not the female chemistry. That's the healing side of chemistry. It, yes, it is the acid corrosive side of chemistry. CNN did a special on cancer years ago and went to a chemist and asked the chemist, which is what I am, 
and ask the chemist, what, what causes cancer? Well, cancer is of a damaged cell, a mutated cell. Well, there's only two sides of chemistry, and of course the answer was acids. But this mucus that builds up in the sinuses, then we have sinus infection. Whenever you hear the word infection, think acid sewage. If you understand the lymph system and you understand infections, nothing but acid sewage. That's why UTIs and, and yeast infections in women burn. Acids burn and hurt. That's a sign that you're not moving your lymph system and you need to move it because if you don't move it, those acids eventually will burn the cell, especially when intracellular acidosis occurs. It's kind of like having constipation. If you have constipation, don't move your bowels. After a while, you start absorbing this putrefaction and, and toxemia and fermentation. You start getting headaches and you can't think right. Well, think of it at the cellular level, a different form of constipation, a much more serious form of constipation because as the cell mutates, it becomes atypical and then cancer. And mucus is always in, involved in this process. To detoxify pneumonias, and they, no one ever died of pneumonia in the natural health field. When you see people die of pneumonia, I, I thought this, uh, uh, this preacher man that, uh, that uh, made it out of the hospital with pneumonia was lucky. Most people die in the hospital from pneumonia, not from pneumonia, from the complications of pneumonia, from the treatment of pneumonia. Look, look at uh, the antibiotics, the Cipro. It kills a lot of people, and yet you can get Cipro like candy. Look at the nature of Cipro. Look at the side effects of Cipro. Gave one of my clients uh, four blood clots and a heart attack, and yet they still sell it on the market. What one must understand is that, you know, we talk a lot about the cells, and we know that there's two fluids that take care of the health of the cells. This is true in your brain. This is true in your liver. This is true in your kidneys. This is true in the prostate, the ovaries, the uterus. Man, it's true everywhere. In the muscles, it's true everywhere. There's another component to all of this, which is the nervous system. Even though a bunch of cells, and even though, again, fed with blood and cleaned with lymph, you still have a nervous system that's an energetic flow that makes everything happen. So a lot of people that feel real chronic fatigue and tired, that's a neurological fatigue. If you look at the other side, you would be involved in the lack of oxygen and carbon to cells. That kind of fatigue would be a deadly one. And that's a problem, of course, that we're seeing, of, of course, with all the stagnation, the malabsorptions, and, and back to the lungs and breathing. A lot of times your lungs are so packed with lymph that your, your thyroid has to kick your heart rate up enough to move blood faster through your body so you can keep oxygen moving through your body. Sometimes when you have a little tachycardia in the, in the heart, it's only because you're not oxygenating your cells properly. Because remember, without oxygen, you know, and carbon with it. So, real important to understand that there's a nervous system problem with everyone now with the adrenals. This is the autonomic nervous system. This is the parasympathetic down to the sympathetic. And this all is involved in every process that requires movement, activity of sympathetic, parasympathetic, that, that movement of, of, of muscles and the, the movement of, of the nervous system and everything. The autonomic nervous system is controlled by the adrenal neurotransmitters. And, of course, when the adrenals are down, so is that system. Now, what we're finding in genetics, of course, is that people's kidneys and adrenals are in the dumpsters. And all you poor souls that are from, from one month old to uh, probably 30 are in this mix of chronic adrenals and kidneys. Once in a while, if you have really good, healthy parents, they're going to pull you up a little bit from this. But anything that's below 120 is low blood pressure. And when you're seeing a lot of blood pressures in the 80s and 90s, that is chronically low. And this is why you're seeing a lot of babies dying now in surgery from anesthetic. So we have a serious problem in this country with what's called neural toxins. Pesticides and herbicides are neural toxins. And there's a lot of neural, some chemist was in the other day and he was saying that there, they think there's over 2,000 neural toxins in our society. That's scary because neural toxins are just what they are. They shut down the nervous system. 
if you're really weak neurologically, just have a, a salad with a bunch of pesticides on it, and I guarantee you, you'll be struggling to take a deep breath. When you can't take a deep breath, that's suppressing of the autonomic nervous system. And this is what we see a great deal. You're seeing a lot of COPDs, a lot of asthmas coming forth because people's adrenals are shot. Therefore, their autonomic nervous systems are shot. The anxieties are high. And that's what this individual is pointing to. She's shot. Her adrenals are shot. Well, no kidding, she has asthma. So when you take a back that up, you'll see that train backs up to the adrenal glands and the autonomic nervous system. And that's true with emphysema. You still have mucus and congestion with these. But on top of that, you have the lymph system. As all this congestion in the lungs get hardened, the lungs get more and more acidic, we can bring in the word cystic fibrosis. We can bring in the word where you scar the lungs, you break down the lungs because you're burning them. And just like that little girl in the news, she's 12 years old, she can't, they're trying to get her to qualify for adult lung transplant. I didn't catch what she's dealing with, but probably cystic fibrosis. I mean, that's heavy scarring of the lungs. I mean, this is what acids do. They scar you up. It's in a disease. It's your own lymph system, and you can see it in the young people. And it's scary what we're seeing now with high acidosis of the human body. It's just unbelievable what's going on with that. And we're just continuing to pump down our children and ourselves high acid forming foods. Wow, you can't deal with high acidosis from inability to filter the lymph system through the kidneys properly and have this high acid meals all the time and come out of and expect to be well and feel well. Uh-uh, not going to happen. And of course, the more that she suppresses expectoration of all the mucus from all the protein eating, then all that lymph, mucus, acid, trapment is going to stay in the lungs along with cellular waste constantly being eliminated by the cells in the lungs. You're going to see this kind of building and building and then they say, well, you got a mass or you got a tumor. This is pure lymphatic stuff added to the fact that your mucosa is part of your lymph system. It produces mucus. <coughs> that stuff. That mucus is protective to you, particularly against proteins. We have a society, like our society not only pushes chemicals, we push proteins. Eh, 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 eh. That'll get you in trouble more than any other food problem is proteins. And dairy proteins are by far, hands down, the most mucus forming proteins on the market. So we are literally, the babies become full of mucus. Notice when you feed your little babies all these formulas and all these dairy products, they get all the colicky, mucusy stuff. They have to burp them all the time. You know, it's just, it just it, and now, of course, with the babies with more hepatic or liver problems, now they can't digest these wacky formulas that are high protein and high fat. Now they're having problems. Remember the little boy in the news who can't handle any formula but one, and it's probably low fat, low protein formula. Because this is just what we can't deal with. And we've been dealing with that to the point where the human body is broken down and we have to fix it. Notice how we have to fix it. We have to get rid of proteins. We have to get rid of fats. We have to get rid of that side of life before we can rebuild and regenerate. How interesting. We also know that we can't regenerate tissue in an acidic medium. So if you want to rebuild lung tissue, how can you do it as long as the acids are in those interstitial areas? and breaking down your cells and all the mucus. So you have to start expectoration because you're getting dehydrated the more acidic you get, meaning that these fluids dry out, get hard, lock in, and you've had people that are coughing, trying to pull a plug out. <coughs> you know, and they go, oh my, my, my. That, that's what happens to this sputum, this mucus, uh, 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 when the lymph system isn't filtering or getting rid of it. That's why the fruit diet is so good, because it is expectorating, it is astringent, of course, it is hydrating. All the things that you want, you find in fruits, berries, and melons above all other foods. Above all other foods. I don't care what people are saying out there. Yes, we'll argue that the quality sucks, and if you have a good pineapple picked off, ripe off a plant, you're in nirvana land, baby. As you begin to detoxify and you begin to hydrate, 
With the astringent value of the fruit, you'll start getting expectoration. <coughs> More mucus flow, easy to flow, easy to expectorate. At the same time, so you get back to those adrenal glands. Hit those adrenal glands. And I would do, probably, if it was me, I would do the adrenal, the New Zealand adrenal glandulars 400s and start with one three times a day. You can go up from there because this is a chronic case, obviously. So bring those adrenals. Take the kidneys because you want to clean that lymph system in your body because you've got to clean these lungs. You either clean the lungs this way or you clean the lungs down through the lymph system. Now with lung cancers, we, get, we see 50-50, if not more, coming up this way. So a lot of times when the body don't want it, it gets rid of it fast, doesn't it? We have a new antispasmodic that I kicked it up a whole nother notch. So it's much better. Uh, this one is good. But the other one, I think, is just going to be, the new one's going to be really, really good. But it works as an antispasmodic, and that's the beauty of herbs versus chemicals. Chemicals are cancer-causing, suppresses expectoration. Herbs relax the nervous system, stop the cramping or the spasms, and allows the body to expectorate. That's God. That's the beauty of God versus man and his playground of chemicals. Got to stop it. We're, we, we reach saturation of chemicals now. Even though you're going for the lungs, you've got to remember that this is a systemic problem. Now, we do fill up, you know, with that said, we do fill up with mucus from just drinking a lot of milk and ice, eating ice creams and stuff like this. So those are the things you might want to, you know, kind of uh, obviously throw away. But let's don't get up in the uh, almond milks and the uh, soy milks. Why, why do we feel we need a milky substance anyway? I think we should get away from that whole idea of I need some kind of milky substance that uh, doesn't really, uh, nothing really to use it for. I don't like to put them in smoothies. You want a smoothie, you want an all-fruit smoothie. You don't want uh, uh, yogurts and, uh, and other milks in a smoothie. That's not a true smoothie. You know, that's man in his mind again. But well, why don't we add uh, some uh, hip protein and uh, why don't we add some... Uh, yeah, that's man's mind right there. So get your thinking more lymphatic, sweetheart. Lymphatic and, and neurological. Lymphatic and neurological, and you can handle both of those at the kidney and adrenals. Get the lungs to start cleaning up the mucus and breaking all this hardened sputum loose in the lungs so you can expectorate it. Clean the bronchi, the lungs, etc., etc., etc. But you've got to strengthen the autonomic nervous system as well. I would do brain and nerve number two. I would hit the adrenals real hard and the kidneys with it and start getting that lymph moving, moving. And that'll also rebuild the kidneys while you're doing that. And keep with a balanced diet to where you can handle that. About 80% fruits, berries, and melons, and maybe at night some salads and stuff like that. You don't have a tumor, cancer, you're not dying here right off, but you want to get this before you start scarring your lungs, blah, 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 blah. How do I, okay, uh, how do I get off of this albuterol without having an asthma attack and thinking I need the albuterol to bring me out of it? Albuterol, which is an inhaler for asthma. Now, with these inhalers, they are a little bit of a bronchial dilator, but they're, they're very carcinogenic. They're very cancer-causing. In the Tampa Tribune newspaper, this is going back many years ago, they did a story on the cancer-causing effects of the aerobids and all these inhalers that people were using. Now, nebulizers are a little different here. Um, I have been using it for going on 20 years now. And what that does is it locks the lymph into the lungs. It doesn't allow, it's not like our antispasmodic herbal tincture, which relaxes it and allows for expectoration. This locks, uh, locks mucus and congestion interstitially, meaning around the cells where all of it is in the first place. Uh, I know it is missing... Uh, I know it is messing with my lungs big time. Yeah, I know it, honey. Especially feeling like they are on fire with pneumonia. And that's a thing. When you feel like you're on fire, you are. And that fire is on the acid side of chemistry. You're being burnt by your own acid waste from your cells. You know, your lungs are just a bunch of cells and two fluids. You know, so you have the same thing in the lungs that you have in the liver and you have in the kidneys. Yeah, the albuterol is the one you've got to think, rethink. Uh, nebulizing treatments, okay. Ven like you were saying, Venlol, uh, you're on that. Something like that, nebulizing treatments, it'll be okay. But you want to use that antispasmodic constantly then. Use the antispasmodic every hour, every two hours if you have to. You really want to try to use that. If not, you use the albuterol, but you just keep going. But albuterol is famous for causing cancer. Famous that I know of. 
I, put, I tried putting a wet towel on my head and breathing the three lung and heal all tea into my lungs, but it seems when I do this, it sets off an asthma attack. That's because it's a neurological thing. Your body's trying, and it could even because you're so spastic here, uh, because you're so inflamed, so acidic that you're spastic here in the lungs. And this is true, all of you guys with COPD of every level. You can use castor oil packs on the lungs, which is very good. It's an anti-inflammatory or antacid. So castor oil packs on the lungs are okay, of course. Anything that will help break up that sputum, um, you can do uh, cupping here with the hands a little bit if you like. Uh, things like that. Hot and cold, hot and cold on the back. And listen, work on these neural lymphatic points on each side of the sternum here. Work clockwise on these neural lymphatic points. Dig in, dig in till it hurts and work these points. Work them down your back. Get your kidneys filtering. Get your lymph moving. Get everything hydrated in your body. If you have to use a little, a little uh, uh, inhaler or something as you move, keep trying to use that antispasmodic. Use it more often if you have to. Uh, and just do what you have to to work yourself because it's going to require you working yourself back out of this. That's what it's going to do. You got yourself deep in there. You're going to back out as you get the body healthy and you're fixing the causative factors. And of course, probably as you're going back, probably genetics in the adrenals and kidneys. That's why you've been suffering all your life. Uh, it seems like when it's not turning into asthma, it's turning into pneumonia. Good. Have a good pneumonia on me, please. Because, again, let's get out of this concept of diseases, crap, and medical thinking. If your lungs are full, now remember, they blame pneumonia on pneumococcus. Well, then how come in 40% of the cases, no pneumococcus present? All right? So let's get away from thinking bacterial causative factors, which is bull crap, and let's get into reality here. And so, this is a neurological weakness on top of mucus. And this is common. This is the way everyone falls into these things. And you just work yourself back out of these. Uh, let me see here. Pneumonia, you've just got to latch your lungs, clean themselves out. If you freak out every time you have a, a, a pneumonia type of feeling, uh, and I know it's panicky and scary because when the adrenals are down, so a breathing is always an, an anxiety thing. No question, but do it myself. So I know all of that, but by using that brain and nerve number two, you're strengthening the nervous system by increasing the adrenals. You're increasing neurotransmitters, which is incre increasing neurological function. And at the same time, you're using herbal antispasmodics so you don't retard or stop expectoration. The worst thing you can do is stop the lungs from expectorating because that that's your next cancer in mass. You can't lock acids interstitially. That is the most dangerous thing you can do to your cells. And then, of course, lung cancer is not fun. And then, of course, the more acidic you fill up with fluids because, again, the response to acidosis is edema. So just remember all of that. Uh, You could do hyperbaric chambers and everything, I guess, so. Oh, I've been using castor oil packs and also practicing breathing techniques through using abdominal breathing. Yeah, get that down in those lower lobes there. Use that abdominal breathing. Smart cookie, this girl. By locking with these uh, 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 um, inhalers, by locking this acid and sputum into these interstitial areas, it's even more on top of more because cells of the lungs keep producing acid waste. People keep eating foods that are mucosic responsive, uh, which means producing mucus. So all of this stuff fills the sinuses, the voice box, the bronchi, the lungs, but it also fills the bowels, the liver, because you notice when you detoxify what you see coming out? Mucus, mucus, mucus at all levels of colors. So this goes in into any of the lung conditions. All of these are the same. Just remember the body's very simplistic. Bunch of cells, two major fluids. One feeds them, one cleans them. One's a kitchen, one's a sewer department. You got a kitchen and a bathroom in every house, including your human house. And so just remember that when the bathroom backs up, Ha! That's where all the pain, that's where all the acid, that's where all the scarring, that's where all this comes from is predominantly, predominantly the acid side of chemistry. There is alkalosis, but if you, if you focus to more on acidosis, you'll find your remedy far better. 
Yeah. So I think that uh, a cystic fibrosis, same thing. Now, you guys with cystic fibrosis, this is a burger bear. This is heavy scarring of the lungs. So you have to go the same way. You can use castor oil packs. you got to fix that neurological connection no matter what. But you've got to move lymph. You've got to move lymph. And I tell you, I have had some very advanced uh, cystic fibrosis case and then some not so advanced Advanced cases, are, I've got my heart squeezing like crazy because it's just sad, sad, sad to see these poor souls dealing with this high acid involvement. So no matter what lung condition, and this also spills right over into lung cancer. You've got lung cancer, what do you got? You've got cells that are being damaged by the acids from their own waste. That means the lymph system in your lung tissue is backed up. Well, if it's backed up in your lungs, guess where else it's backed up? Yep, this is a systemic fluid, right? So you have it backed up all over the body. But when you start getting tumors or masses in the lungs, turn that switch. Go on a big fruit fast. I tell you, grapes really clean the lungs out really well. We've had a lot of lung cancer cases. And if you're a lung cancer that's filling up with edema, keep getting aspirated, but don't give up. You start detoxifying your body, kick in the kidneys and adrenals, start moving those lymphs, get into the lung form, you start expectorating, and you'll pull all these tumors out, you'll move whatever you need to through the lymph nodes, and clean that way, and then you'll restore your lung health and vitality. Remember, cancer is just their word for damaged cells with acids. That's not a disease. They don't own people. They don't own the word liver, FDA. They don't own the word pancreas, FDA. We we do. We're the people. Thank you. Now, uh, any any of these things with the lungs or anything like that is in detox, detox, detox. And you'll see the value of the golden key of detoxification. It will unlock the mysteries of pain and swelling and, 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 and tumors and all of this. And it'll clean and restore the human body. I love it. It's perfect. It's where it's the only focus man can have right now at his advanced level. Look at this poor 12-year-old girl. She's fainting. But we're seeing it in babies. So it, it is, we have a very serious genetic problem in the kidneys and adrenals. It's time all apathics wake up to this. But what are you going to do with it? If you don't understand how to regenerate tissue, you ain't going to do nothing with it. That's the problem. So any lung condition, no matter what, Always work on the adrenals. Always work on the kidneys. Get that lymph moving. Clean up the gut. Always clean up the gut, the bowels, the GI tract, and get into those lungs and start expectorating. You can use some castor oil packs. Remember the nervous system to the COPD chain, which is asthma, emphysema, COPD at the top, and, and just go after those adrenals and go after that. There's all kinds of you know, diagnosis is out there. But the bottom line to Wellville is that the hellville we live in comes from the acid side of chemistry, all the mucus from the wrong foods that we're eating, and get away from the proteins, particularly anything that smacks of a dairy protein. I remember I was in the hospital one day and I, I was at the cardiac ward. I was uh, watching the heart monitors of this one case. And I saw this RN and LPN. The RN, uh, I, I can't remember which one, had the glass of milkshake. And this guy, I think it was the, the LPN was suctioning this guy, his mucus, he was, he was full of mucus, <laughs> full of mucus. And the RN had a milkshake for him to drink. And, and, he, and she was saying, Mr. Jones, you have to drink your milkshake. And I looked over there and I said, you're killing him because it, it pissed me off so bad that they were trying to force this guy that was suffocating on his own mucus, more mucus. That very, very bad hospitals, very, very bad dietitians. That's not how it works.